Hello and welcome to the Weight Loss for Women Over 50 Masterclass Series. Greg Farron is here with me. Hey, Greg. Hey, how you doing? Wonderful to have you here. So Greg is the coach that helps ambitious women drop body fat and fix their mindset around loving who you are. He has 20 years in nutrition, coaching, and fitness with a background in women's health and functional medicine. So he is here to tell us how to love yourself and lose weight without counting calories. So welcome, Greg Farron. So happy to have you here. Awesome to be here. Looking forward to this one. It's going to be fun. I am. Um, yeah. So I love hearing this story of how my speakers get got to what, what you're doing now. So can you tell us a little bit about your background and how did you get into this? So I'll keep it nice and short, but... Um, about 11 or 12, I was a bit of a chubby kid and then puberty happened and I became athletic. I could run and I could do all of that stuff. However, my mum and my two sisters, I saw that they were always struggling with their weight and that kind of led me in a path of, I wanted to understand just how the body worked more, you know, and it obviously helped my sports and stuff as well. So I, went and did a degree in sports science. But the big frustration was, is that being the older brother and the son, you can't coach family. It just doesn't work. They doesn't hate work. it. They hate it. Yeah. And they, so, and they turn it around on you. If you have anything that might be a slight unhealthy, you can't have that. <laughs> yeah. You're, 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 the, you're the expert. Why are you eating some chips or some fries? Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I went and did my sports science degree and then I actually ended up going into kind of management leadership roles. Um, so that helped me to understand people very much. Okay. Um, and then eventually I ended up in the NHS where I used to run gynecology, maternity, endocrinology, rheumatology, a whole load of other ologies. So that helped me spend a lot of time with some world-class physicians so I could understand hormones and all of that stuff. I've also done some functional nutrition and functional medicine training, as well as all of my personal training, mindset, everything else that I've been doing for all these years. So I've got a bit wow. of a, I've got a bit of a CV for sure. A little bit. So that is how you got into this industry here. Yeah. So why is love the answer to weight loss? Oh, this is a deep topic. So let me phrase this first of all there is a lot of you know self-love going around the world right now you know you can open up tiktok and someone's talking about self-love mm -hmm. but let's take it back to health first okay because health is the ultimate in self-love i'll let okay. that one land for a second so if health is the ultimate in self-love and that being mental and physical health the definition of health is the absence of injury or dis-ease. And most injury, illness, and dis-ease is driven by how we treat our bodies. Okay. So, I love that. <laughs> so if we're if we're suffering with, with our weight, for example, there is a good chance that somewhere along the line, yes, something traumatic may have happened. Totally agree. Women have had childbirth, stressful lives. I totally get that. But the real self-love would be to put yourself in a position that you can work and your body works in the most efficient way possible. That is true self-love. What we do nowadays is we medicate. We don't give self-love, we medicate with food. And we'll say stories to ourselves which are, oh yeah, I deserve some ice cream because I feel a bit sad about what happened with the boss at work today. Or I'm arguing with the husband, so I deserve, you know, some chocolate. There's self-love. And actually, that's actually medication, not true self-love. Good point. So... Yeah. What actually is holding women over 50 back from sticking to a so-called diet? Well, first of all is we, we are built on stories. We are built on the stories that we have created for years and years and years and years. 
And for a lot of the women that I've worked with, a lot of women have seen their mums, yo-yo diet, you know, Jane mm -hmm. Fonda, do the grapevine, um, mm -hmm. Rosemary Connolly, Weight Watchers. They've tried all of these things. So first of all, let's get into the point that the word diet isn't a bad thing. It's our stories around the word diet that are the problem. Because let's be honest, diet just means what you eat habitually. So everyone on this planet is on a diet right now. So when you release that and actually start thinking about it that way, you're like, oh, actually, I have a diet. And that diet is either leading me in a path to be fit, well, energized, function properly, or it's going the opposite way. So I'm overeating, it's leading me to things like diabetes, other metabolic conditions, et cetera, inflammation, all of that stuff. Okay. So the word diet, first of all, if we can learn to disarm that word, because when we embarked on these diets, we had a story and often that story was, I need to lose weight fast because um, fast looks like success. Yep. That success, because we're always trying to please people, is what drives us to try unsustainable diet strategies. Because in our logical brain, we know that the chicken and broccoli diet is unsustainable. We know it. The minute we do it, we know it. However, the need to look good for friends, look good for family, to show that you're a success means that we try an unsustainable method. And we know it. We know that by day four, when we're when we wake up and we can see chocolate bars after after four days on the chicken and broccoli diet, we know that it's not sustainable. <laughs> Yeah, but we can visually see them in our heads. Like, yeah, we, we wake up, know. you see chocolate angels around the room. <laughs> What's going on? So, the, those we often, and this is a big thing for women as well, we look for love in the accolades that people give us. So, hey, Cherie, oh my God, you look amazing. What did you do? Ah, oh, I'm now getting validation. I'm getting some self-love. And I'm going to say, well, you know what, Greg? I did the syrup maple diet and I lost seven pounds in a week. Look at me. Mm -hmm. And we know we take that as love because it's affection coming our way. Because we haven't mastered the actual art of loving ourselves in the first place. Interesting. Very interesting. So what should a woman over 50 be eating to lose weight? What do you suggest? The human diet. <laughs> like okay. Simple we, as that. We overcomplicate this stuff because we are looking for saviors in fasting, paleo, keto, low carb. Ultimately, the human body works pretty much the same in both sexes. Let's be honest, it does. We take food in, the stomach breaks it down, nutrients go into our blood, insulin comes along, puts it into cells. If there is too much energy, because we know that insulin cannot create fat, don't get me started on the hormone issue. That's a whole nother subject. I'll come back to that maybe. We know that if we have too much, because let's be honest, and this is going to be a really hard thing to hear, a lot of the ladies listening to this will have suffered some bullying at school at some time. Maybe because of their weight. So actually, as a kid, we already knew that if I ate too much, I would maybe be bullied for my weight. So obviously, because we're sad, we then go for more food to medicate. Yeah. Yeah. But we knew as kids, and it's in our cartoons and everything, that the kid that had too much food was the overweight kid. We knew that. So now we get to adult age, and we're trying to escape all of these old stories. We look for other things 
to justify our you know, our potential failures before. Mm. Oh, Greg, you know what? It's my hormones. Okay, awesome. Which hormone is it? Leptin, adiponectin, insulin, ghrelin, human growth hormone, testosterone. Which one is it? Aldosterone, estrogen, progesterone. Which one is it? Most women don't know. But what happens is this. I don't want to look at myself deeply and understand my own habits because I'm scared. Because in that story, I'm a failure. I'm not very good at stuff. Someone on TikTok comes along with, hey, the reason you can't lose weight is not because of calories in, calories out. It's because of insulin. Oh, I got it. So it's not my fault. Even though I ate the food, it's not my fault. It's my insulin. So that means I'm now not feeling like a failure. So then you can try this low carb diet, blah, 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 blah. Which then becomes unsustainable and leads you back to then scrolling on Instagram, looking for another diet method. The circle. Just backing around. I read a, mm -hmm. I read a, read a stat the other day that the average person mm -hmm. has tried something like 167 fad diets. Oh, that's a high number. 167? Right. Oh. And I suppose the older you get, the, the you know, the more we age, we that number goes up, of course, because if we can't find the answer, we keep trying, right? So... So why did, okay, help me with this part because you, you always hear this 1,200 calories. Why why do women hate calories? Because calories represents to them restriction, deprivation, starving yourself to look good for other people back in the day. Okay. So mm -hmm. this, is, this, is, this is the very cycle. We were younger, maybe teenage years, maybe in our 20s, 30s, whenever. We go on the cauliflower diet because we're told, or we try to just live on chicken, broccoli, and lettuce. Mm -hmm. Keep it low calorie, right? Mm -hmm. it, we give up or we break it at Thursday. We start on Monday, we break up on Thursday with it, and we just dive into pizza, chocolate, ice cream because we're tired, we're mentally fatigued, and we need to medicate. Mm -hmm. Keep doing this. And then we're on diet number 45 here. We then look back and we're like, well, it's that calories monster. That calories thing has been driving the narrative. So therefore, I hate calories now. Oh, okay. It, again, it leads back to the story around what it is whatever it is this in this instance it's the calorie and the story that you have with the calorie and everyone always throws they always tell me every client tells me oh it's, i need 1200 calories i'm like no 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 you know we're not limiting at 1200 calories that's the restriction because humans love familiarity I lost weight over six weeks on 1200 calories or 800 calories. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back and do that again, rather than okay. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to hang out around 1,800 calories, be satisfied, move more, have more energy, not want to kill the family every week because I'm not hungry, <laughs> angry, lethargic. Hangry. Yep. Yeah. Cause you're hangry. Yeah, yep. it, mean, it means I can have a Krispy Kreme now and again. That feels scary to do that. That feels scary to actually be nourished, energized, because mm -hmm. in your head, the story is, I have to suffer. I have to, it has to be hard. It has to be a badge of honor. I have to go to my friends and say, yeah, I worked really hard because we're looking for love and success and adulation. Because somewhere in our lives, somewhere we didn't have that. Mm. There's the psychology piece. 
you got to suffer. I've got to be a martyr to it. Because it's always got to be a struggle. That is interesting, Greg. It's always got to be a struggle. Always has to be a struggle. So those are some of the mindset woes that women of all ages are having. Everybody. Of all ages. Not just women over 50. I mean, we're, we, you know, this is designed for women over 50, whether you're 50, 60, 70, 80, even 90, right? But you can, even in your 40s, right? But women everywhere, that is so interesting, the struggle. Because if we, we want the attention when we look good, right? But then we want the attention as we're struggling through it too, to get there. Oh, I'm working so hard. Well, if we look at life in general, it's almost a badge of honor to struggle. Oh, I, I worked 75 hours this week. Oh, you know what, That's girlfriend? True. I worked 85 hours this week. Oh, I, I worked 95 and I did overtime. So if mm -hmm. we listen, we can hear every time that we are looking for the struggle rather than saying, hey, do you know what? I've been losing body fat. I tracked my calories and I know I'm going to go and tell people how to do it without tracking calories. I track my calories and I've been eating about 800 calories and I've been full. I've been going to the restaurants. I've been having your takeaway with the hubby. I feel energized. My gym workouts are awesome because this is what happens. And this has happened to so many of my clients. They come and work with me. They leave me in amazing shape. Their friends who are trying to lose weight question how they did it. And I'm sure the ladies, if any of you have you know, lost some weight, got into good shape, you've had this where you've lost the weight, your friends say, how did you do it? You say, well, I was, I ate some protein, I ate some vegetables, some fats. I had about, you know, 1,600, 700 calories. I trained three or four times a week and walked more and I went to sleep on time. Mm -hmm. And they dismiss it and then start telling you how you should be doing it. And I know everyone listening to this podcast or this uh, sort of summit has, has had that. And I'm sure you've had it before, Sri, right? Mm -hmm. How did you lose the weight? Well, I just did these four or five things. Okay, well, I read yesterday that you should do the low carb diet. This is what I'm going to do. Instead of going, I just follow the template. But no, I want to struggle. I, I need to do it by myself. That's another one for women. And this comes up in everyday life. You know, oh, I won't make the kids do any um, of the housework. I must do it. Yeah. And this, and this is going to blow people's minds. And it's not connected, but you'll see how it's connected. If you go on social media, many women are talking about their other halves not helping around the house. This happens because of this. When we're growing up, we see things happen. Our generation probably saw our mums do lots of, or moms, the Americans, sorry. Um, okay. We, saw, we, we have people from all over the world on here, Greg. Okay. So however, you know, you're in the United Kingdom, right? Yeah. So you're in the UK. Mom. So you, you, you say it how you want to say it because everybody, you know, yeah. We have other speakers from there too. It's just that my American clients, they always correct me. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good. Up. <laughs> so what we've grown up with, we've seen maybe our mums, you know, doing lots of work around the house, doing everything around the house while the husband maybe goes to work and comes home and sits on the sofa, and relaxes. Mm -hmm. We then have kids and we start to copy exactly what they do. But then the kids don't get involved because they just mirror what they see. But we're blatant. But then, so what we're doing is we're just creating generations of people that won't help mum around the house. Mm -hmm. So I have to do it on my own. I've got to do it on my own. I've got to do the weight loss on my own. I won't get help because I don't feel I deserve to get help. I shouldn't invest in getting help. How many times have, have and I'm asking the, listen, the listeners and the watchers, how many times have you said, do you know what? I'm going to get help with my health and then decided not to because you feel like A, you don't deserve it or B, I can do it on my own. Mm -hmm. Or you're feeling selfish. 
if you do it for yourself and take care of yourself, exactly. then I'm being selfish. And then I feel guilty yeah. because why should I do that for me? I, I have kids that I should be doing that for, or a husband or, or a partner. Exactly. So then what we're doing is we're teaching the next generation, if you have kids, that they should try and do everything by themselves, that they don't deserve to be happy and healthy because they, they can see you struggle. They see everything you do. Your kids, kids are terrible like that. They see every little thing. You might not think they see it. They see it. They see you tired. They see it. They see you trying to adjust your clothes all the time and not feeling comfortable. They see that. And they think that's normal because you're not role modeling the behavior of saying, hey, kids, you know what? I need help with this stuff. I'm going to go hire somebody to help me because I've got to do it on my own. Very good. The, you know, in this generation, like my mom stayed home and did all of the work dad was the provider mm -hmm. right mom did everything at home so yeah i can see that as you're telling that story i'm like yeah mm -hmm. it's exactly where that comes from and not just myself i always i always use myself as examples because it's just easy right because i can relate to a lot of things and so i can see some of the viewers probably going Oh yeah, mom was a stay-at-home stay mom. Some women started getting in the workforce, right? Yep. But, but my dad he, had. Go ahead. He, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Your dad. Well, I was just saying, my dad asked her to stay home with us kids after she went to to college for two years. She was going to be a teacher, and then decided to stay home with us kids. See how it happens. And then you try and do everything on your own, the housework. So when I when I talk to clients, and I one of my first questions often is, is how does your house work? How do you, what what chores do the kids have? And my clients are thinking, I thought I was going to get a nutrition plan. We'll come to that, but I want to know how your house works. Does your do your kids have chores? Do they have regular tasks that mean that you're not stressed all the time? Oh, actually. Mm -hmm. and then the light bulbs start going off and then they come back and say Greg I've revamped my household I'm happier I feel better I have time to exercise for me I'm eating better I'm a better partner I have more energy for the kids yeah and you've lowered your stress because you're not doing all the things and then, then all of a sudden you start to eat better mm -hmm. so in all of this, here's the thing. Wait, we're, we're so busy looking at the weight loss element of it, which is the tactical, the mechanical, but we're not looking at the emotional and the energetic side of it. Got it. So, cause we just love, cause we love to see tactics. Mm -hmm. Greg, what food should I be eating? I guarantee that 99% of people know what to eat. Everyone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Most of the women watching this know what they need to do. And it's you... easy to go into tactical mode, right? All right. So I'm, that's it today. I'm going to start with my protein. I'm going to get my protein shake. I'm going to get to the gym. Okay. But how is your environment shaped? What's your stress like? What's your, what's your emotional needs? How much sleep are you getting? Do you move? Are you ready to move your body with intention, not to lose weight, but for a bigger purpose? So one of the first things I start clients with is we don't goal set, we dream set. Oh. Everyone's like, what? What dream set? I'm like, well, here's the thing. If there is no emotional connection to what you really want, because let's be honest, nobody really wants to lose weight. Okay, go into that more. Everyone wants to feel loved, attractive, safe, energized, happy. Mm -hmm. Nobody, whenever clients come to work with me, they never mention the scale weight ever again. They never, 
they say, Greg, I'm strong. I can mm-hmm. get into flows. I am doing, I'm getting promotions at work. And I say, I thought you came to me to lose weight. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And then, then they're like, oh, but my whole life has changed. And as a result of my whole, whole life changing, I now love myself to nourish myself, right? To move with intention, mm-hmm. sleep properly and not to do everything all the mm-hmm. time. And this is why we fail. We keep going for the tactic because the tactic works short term. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to eat more protein. How much How much protein do I need to, to eat each day? Like I've had that question on repeat. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, here's my first question. What stops you from eating protein? I don't have time. Okay, awesome. What's the reason for not having time? Because I'm doing this, this, and this. Okay, awesome. Should we have a look at your calendar and see how we can look at your day to allow you to spend some time to make sure you've got the right food? Or should we not just get a a meal delivery company to sort your food out for you? I can do that. Yes, you can do that. Oh, but that's cheating. No, it's not. (laughs) <laughs> because we got this martyrdom symptom yeah. again yeah and if you're a woman who let's say you earn a hundred dollars an hour for your job let's just mm-hmm. we've got this thing tied up in well if i cook every day if i clean every day that makes me a good woman that's that's what happens that is what happens for men it's slightly different being a man is slightly different but that's what we have if I spend hours and hours with the kids, that makes me a good mom. Actually, you being happy, energized, healthy, teaches the kids how to do the same. Because that's the role of a parent. A tigress doesn't take the kids hunting. She goes off and hunts and brings the tough back for the kids. And maybe maybe they might play with, they might have a baby, I'm sorry for the vegans, they might have a baby there where she'll teach them how to hunt. Mm-hmm. But all the time she's just teaching them, teaching, teaching, teaching. Mm-hmm. So they can then see how to hunt. So she might walk off and say, stay here, but watch what I do. That's That's parenting. Sitting at home, just being with the child isn't always real parenting something i learned with my son for sure yeah and the the modeling that you're doing is educating they like you said earlier in the interview they pick up on everything they're watching they're watching everything you do and even my um, two-year-old granddaughter all of a sudden she's she repeated somebody the other day and it was like whoa where'd you get that from you know like seriously I'm like okay guys we gotta clean it back up again <laughs> yeah no they hear everything you don't think they heard it they heard it they heard that yeah. you sleep every night they heard that your skin they see that your skin isn't always best because you're not hydrated they see all of that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So our role as parents for me is to make sure they have the best start and i can only give them the best start by being the role model perfect Perfect. I love that. So thank you for sharing all of this wisdom today, Greg. (laughs) This is awesome. So you have a free guide for the viewers, my seven day fat loss food guide. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, it's basically a tool that, you know, a few of the ladies that come to work with me grabbed it before, before they came to work for me, Mm -hmm. they lost eight to 10 pounds on it. And it just gives you a simple structure eat fruit, vegetables, eat protein at every meal with some amazing recipes as well. And if you follow it, you'll start to see results. Mm -hmm. I'm going to caveat it right now. Okay. The ish, the the big thing is, is it's great on paper, but it is a tactic. So everyone grow, grab it, download it. It's awesome. But -hmm. there's always the other bit missing which is the deeper work that we have to do on ourselves that supports the tactic. So it's an awesome guide. 
And every mm -hmm. client I, I've given it to or who's downloaded it before they've come to work with me, you've got great results. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a kickstart. But yeah, have had it. Yeah, it's a it's a great way to get started, right? And the link is below the video for everyone watching. All you have to do is click it and and sign up for it. So you also have a bonus valued at $99, the five steps you need to lose weight masterclass. That's for anyone that signs up for the VIP all access pass, which means you purchase the recordings of our masterclass series. So can you tell us a little bit about this? About yeah. Your bonus? yeah, of course I can. So that was a masterclass to just break down the five steps simply, first of all, that people need to go through to get the result that they really want. Love that. And the beauty of it is you can apply it to every year of your life. Because that's the beauty. How you, yeah. How you do one thing is how you do everything. Mm, that is true. So any last piece of advice or actionable step you want to leave the viewers with today, Greg? I've got so many. <laughs> I'm going to go over a couple and I'm going to be short, sharp and sweet. Okay. Calories matter. I don't care whether you count them or not. Okay. But overindulgence of food and underindulgence of food is not self love. Okay. Number two, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you're not taking your health seriously or you have where you, you know, you're doing it once or twice and, you know, you know, you do the six weeks and then you stop, I guarantee that you're doing it in other areas of your life. So you're doing it in your business. This is why you don't have consistent income or you're doing it in a relationship, which is why you have arguments with your partner or the kids every once in a while because you haven't equalized it and made it part of you. Mm -hmm. Now that's a whole nother conversation about making all of this part of you. It's a whole deeper level conversation. Um, and also just the last thing is, before we look at all of the things like hormones and all the rest of it, let's check in with self and just say, am I doing the things that my body will love? So am I sleeping properly? Am I drinking water? Am I moving intentionally daily? That doesn't necessarily mean a hard gym workout every day, but get your heart rate up daily. Am I spending time in quietness for me? Reading a book, doing a, doing Sudoku, meditation, tai chi, yoga, whatever. And am I just ask myself, ask myself the question, am I really giving myself real love or am I giving myself medication? Because when you start looking at giving yourself medication, all of these things pop up on TikTok and tell you that, you know, oh, it's your hormones, it's your insulin, it's, it's you're doing too much cardio, you know, in your heart, hmm? And if you look there, you'll find the answer. That's it. I love that. Yep. Look into your heart. So wonderful advice. So for those of you tuning in, check out Greg's free seven day fat loss guide. The link is below the video, along with his website, his social medias, ways to get a hold of Greg. Again, it's below the video. And then the VIP bonus. Um, from Greg is the five steps you need to lose weight masterclass. If you purchase the VIP, you not only get Greg's, you get all of the speaker bonuses worth over $2,500. So uh, be sure to tune back in to the rest of our weight loss for women over 50 masterclass series. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, Greg Farron. This has been awesome. Thank you very much for having me.